Hi Making Strides, thank you so kindly for having me. My name's Emily Tapp, I'm a para triathlete, current world champion, and I just got a silver at the Com Games. Pretty exciting stuff. But for me, I wasn't always an elite athlete. I um, had my accident in 2011, and post that, I gained a considerable amount of weight. I was probably 70 kilos, which is a good extra person beside me. Um, it wasn't until I started doing recovery centers such as Making Strides where I learned the importance and the daily choices I get to make to enhance my performance and my recovery. So that includes good nutrition, hydration, rest and recovery post session so that you can enhance that daily lifestyle. And body image is unique. You're all individuals, you design differently you're not going to all look the same but that's what makes you you and that's what's so great and exciting so if you're making daily choices that make you feel healthy and happy on the inside then your body image is you and you get to embrace that so enjoy i hope you all have a lovely day it's a nice sunny day on the gold coast so get out and amongst it and slip slap and slap bye guys thank you hi my name's georgia i'm a teacher of uh, complete paraplegic Hi, uh, my name's Bryn and I've been in wheelchair for about four years. Hi, my name's Alison. I've been in wheelchair for nine years. Um, I had my accident when I was 18. Hi, I'm Ryan. Um, Ryan just like... I don't even know. Hi, I'm Ryan. I have a quad board and I wear bright shoes so no one has to look at my head. So I've been in a chair for 14 years now. I had an accident when I was 10 years old. Um, I don't think it really, truly like hit me until I was 14 actually, so four years into my um, being in a wheelchair. And I think that's when like body image hit and like being a girl and growing up um, like fairly different as well. My body image before, or what I thought of my body image before my accident, I cared a lot about being a young 20 year old it's pretty important just how you feel about yourself and your confidence and I like to be fit and active so I thought I had a pretty good body image um, and a lot of it had to change after my injury um, a lot kind of changes because you lose weight because you're sitting there doing nothing in hospital your legs get skinny you put on just stationary kind of fat um, and you kind of notice that you don't like the way you look some of the times. It's a bit bit hard to address or, or be comfortable with. So for me, my body image has changed a fair bit. So before my injury, I probably was a bit self-conscious and preoccupied on how I looked. Um, and you know, I may have avoided going to the beach or covering up a little bit and just comparing myself negatively to other people, which it wasn't such a great thing to be doing. Um, then I had my injury and you know, it was tough initially because of the major changes your body goes through um, and your know, whole life's different. When adjusting the body image um, in a chair, I kind of took the, um, the mindset of you can't hide it, just own it. Um, there's, you know, there's no point in trying to hide the fact you're in a wheelchair or anything else that comes along with having a spinal cord injury because you know if you can't accept what everyone else can see, well, What's the point? Um, growing up is hard enough, let alone being and being a girl, let alone being in a chair, and I think that's why it really, really hit me. Um, what helped me overcome it was not comparing myself to other people, but also um, looking more at my ability and like being grateful for what I my body could do. Um, it helps if you've got a lot of people around you that don't seem to care, um, and I had a lot of great friends that didn't bother them. Uh, but I think you have to get used to uh, being all right with how you look. You can't really snap your fingers and go, okay, I'm attractive and exactly how I want to look, but you work on it and you get comfortable with it. You do things if you're not that happy about it that you can control. Um, and you are confident in your own body image and people don't seem to mind or care. Um, it's the, the confidence and your personality that's almost as big as your body image. That's when you grow up and you get a bit more mature past your young 20s, you realise it's not just if you've got a six pack or big arms like Jack or something. It's, 
it's just, yeah, who you are as a person is a lot more intrinsically important. So I feel like a lot of girls struggle with body image um, and it's, I think social media has a big role to play because people compare themselves all the time. Um, and then I found it extremely hard because I was in a wheelchair as well, so I feel like not only did I was stressed about body image, but I was stressed about being so different as well. Um, and I, it really got me down, but then I don't know what happened, but I just kind of changed and I was like, I've got to own this, um, work with what I've got and kind of roll with it. And then that kind of um, allowed me to be a lot more confident um, with it. And I was kind of learned to be grateful for um, what I had and what I could do. My, my ideal image of a good body image effectively now is more about what the body can do, not kind of what it looks like. Um, you know, if I could be a lot, you know, I'm more about function over, over looks. If it, if I could be a lot more strong and independent, well, I'd be, I'd rather have that than, than looks. It's, um, you know, at the end of the day, beauty fades. Not that I ever had much of it, but. But now three years on, I think I've probably got the most positive view of my body image I've had. And, um, that's because I more look at my body in what it can do rather than negatively comparing it to other people. Um, so I guess, yeah, it's been a journey and I'm expecting it to be ongoing, but right now I try and think positively, even if those negative thoughts do creep in and again, just focus on all the amazing things my body can do. So in owning, like working with what you've got, I would choose things that would suit me and, um, suit, obviously look good in being in a wheelchair and... Um, I also really focused on what was healthy for me and like knowing that I was doing the right thing physically and mentally was um, Yeah, it helped a lot in regards to overcoming um, Insecurities about body image and being in a wheelchair mm -hmm. Bust your confidence. <clears throat> um, You kind of have to adjust your expectations when you're dating or in a relationship as well You've got to be quite comfortable with sharing your body image with that one special person. I think you've got to be um, kind of vulnerable to let them see you how you look naked, how you look all the time when you're not completely dressed up for one kind of event. You've really got to um, be willing to let them in and see you like that and trust that they're still happy to be with you and it's a difficult step to take but it's definitely worth it when you find someone that's accepting of your body image and your accepting of theirs. When I first had my spinal cord injury, the second thing I thought about was, um, will ever anyone ever love me or will I ever have sex again? That's the second thing when I was laying in my hospital bed. And as soon as that hit me, I felt insecure about myself. I wasn't confident at all. And it took me about a month to wrap my head around it. And I, in my bed every day, I would think about it. Will I ever be loved? Um, and I started seeing a psychologist from that point. Um, about a year after, when I got out of hospital, I started taking photos with my friends in my chair. And that point I realized that I'm not any different from a walking girl, that I'm still beautiful, um, that I'm just sitting down. And that's all you could see was me just sitting down. Um, and I also when I went out to the pubs about a year after, I realized men still hit on me. Um, but I thought that my wheelchair would stop me from getting men that are idiots, but it didn't do anything. I still had bad relationships in my 20s, good relationships, one night stands. I did all of that like a normal 20 year old. Um, it, I had sex, the first time I had sex, which I call my wheelchair virginity, was when I was still in rehab, I snuck out and I slept with a shark slayer, so I was quite happy with myself. Um, but I had the same thoughts as my able body virginity. I was thinking, will I be enough? Um, will I get pleasure out of this? Will it feel okay? Will it hurt? Everything that I had thought of about my able body virginity, I thought about that. And it's the same thing happened. It was fine. There was nothing to worry about. I did have a couple of thoughts before, like what about bowel and bladder and all that sort of stuff. You just got to deal with all of that that day before you try anything like that. But it was exactly the same as my able body virginity. It worked out fine. Yeah. I guess is um, realizing that people might just see you a guy or a girl in a wheelchair, which is hard because that's not what I like to be seen as, or I'm sure anyone in a wheelchair likes to be seen as. They don't want to be um, reminded of, say, oh, you know that Bryn guy, and they say, oh, the guy in the wheelchair. They, I kind of want to be known outside of a wheelchair as well, because for me, dating isn't about, oh, find someone who's 
okay to be with the guy in the wheelchair. It's someone who wants to be with me anyway. Um, and I think that's the tricky part of dating for everybody. But uh, when you're in a wheelchair, you kind of have to let them know that's a big part of your life, but there's ways around it with the right person. Okay, hi everyone. Um, we've made it this far into Making Strides TV without seeing my face again. Uh, but I have a few things that I wanted to touch on with this subject that I don't think anyone has really mentioned. Uh, but I think they're super important. One of them, when we say body image, is uh, also uh, our image of ourselves with a disability. I know that's something that I've struggled with. Uh, the whole time that I've had my spinal cord injury is not wanting to appear any more disabled than I already am. Uh, so I've made it 14 years without ever even having sat in a power chair. Um, all I've ever used is really just my manual chair. Um, I've never been a fan of getting you know, wheelchair accessible taxis or anything like that. Anything that made me appear more disabled than I was, I really steered well clear of because I just didn't want to look that way and now that I am so far post injury I'm realizing uh, that that's been to my own detriment you know there's days where my shoulders are just so sore that I can't even transfer or get myself out of bed or push my wheelchair uh, but I still won't use any power assistive devices um, and I think that's something that I'm probably gonna I'm going to pay for in the long run that we all need to be aware of um, that that maybe sometimes you know certain devices and things that are out there to help us that we should be taking advantage of them rather than seeing them as something that might uh, be labeling us or making us more uh, evident our disability more evident than it already is another uh, big one that that has stood out for me is uh, I stopped comparing myself to other women and, and what they looked like and what they were wearing, but I really started comparing myself to other wheelchair users, uh, comparing my posture, the way I sat versus the way they sat or, you know, my leg, what my legs look like and what their legs look like. And then I, I kind of got caught up in that and I was thinking, why don't I look the way that they do in their wheelchair? And then I, I kind of realised that um, you know just like every woman or every man is unique and individual so is every person with a spinal cord injury and you know my posture isn't going to look like someone else's I, especially if I have a different level injury to them you know I was comparing myself to people with a lot lower level injuries than mine and that's just not how it works you know and and I just sort of stopped focusing on what they looked like and why I didn't look like that and really just uh, started taking a look at myself and working on what I could work on and just uh, making sure that I was comfortable in my chair because that's really all that matters. Um, my advice to anyone else struggling with body image would be to um, not compare yourselves to uh, let alone able bodies if you're in a chair or um, different disabilities. Um, kind of just work with what you got and be grateful for what your body can do. I guess this ties back into body image and your kind of own self image. It's where you probably need to be um, all right with your capabilities and a really probably good communicator to get through that first little hump of what can and can't work in a relationship. You know, um, yeah, and just I suppose when it comes to body image, confidence is as big a thing as any, you know. My p biggest piece of advice is feel confident and love yourself before you love anyone else. Otherwise, um, you're just not going to feel good about yourself in the long run. Love you, Ryan. Oh, biggest fans. Tell me how.